Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the third series of the Haiku P podcast. I'm Patricia and this week I'm going to be continuing with a series of podcasts I started on the essence of haiku. But I also have a little treat for you, I hope, because I'm going to be bringing you the first instalment of our third Renku. I'd like to start with a big thank you to everyone who sent me feedback from the first of the series in episode 3, in which I was talking about the haiku moment. I was delighted to receive some feedback that, whilst not totally disagreeing with me, certainly made me question some elements of what I said. I've collected it all together, and what I'll do is come back to it and talk about the feedback at the end of the series. So please keep it coming. It's been great. But before I carry on, I can't resist sharing a little haiku moment composed by M. Shane Pruitt. Changing my lens, a haiku moment comes into focus. Thanks, Shane. Now, on to my next thought piece. Don't forget, it's an opinion and I welcome debate. Last time I said I was going to talk about what I initially called emotion in this podcast. But unfortunately, I've spent a week in the company of flu. One of those nasty viruses where you don't feel outrageously sick, but your head is completely full of fog and you lose the will to do anything. So there wasn't even the advantage that I could stay in bed and really think through what I wanted to say. My brain would not play ball. Consequently, I'll come back to that topic in the next episode, well, episode 7. Today, my podcast on essence is on a different subject, and has been influenced by a visit to an exhibition in Zurich of Zurimoto. According to the exhibition information, this literally means printed things. It was a collection of Japanese woodblock prints from the 19th century, on which poetry, some of which we'd now call haiku, were written. Unfortunately, they didn't translate the poetry. Ah well. You'll probably think I'm bonkers, because when I started to think through today's topic, it was, to me, blindingly obvious. And I'm somewhat embarrassed that I hadn't put it in writing before, or spoken about it before. But as I went round this exhibition, it hit me in the face like a wet lettuce that at the heart of haiku, you have its simplicity and perspective of everyday life. Some would add brevity to this tiny list, but I'm not going to, and I'll come back to it in another podcast. What do I mean by simple? Well, the language, for example. We don't fill our haiku with adjectives and adverbs. Perhaps we fling some in from time to time, but only if it makes sense. Now, I don't want to say they're forbidden, because let's face it, as Western haiku evolves, so rules crumble. It occurs to me, the rain dissolves the cliff face, appropriation. Generally, we keep our language universal. I should write a verse in English here in Switzerland, and you should be able to follow it linguistically anywhere else in the world, as long as you can read English. But let's not forget... We don't want to write blah haiku. We want to write something of interest, something special, don't we? And that's where the aha moment I discussed in episode 3 comes in. Let me see if I can give you an example of how haiku simplifies when compared to non-haiku Western verse. I'd like to turn to Sylvia Plath. The opening verse of Morning Song struck me, well... Actually, I could have used any number of the verses, but let's go with the opening one. Love set you going like a fat gold watch. The midwife slapped your foot soles and your bald cry took its place among the elements. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? Wonderful use of words and rhythm. And your bald cry just sends my stomach into spasms. And it's three lines. Only three lines. But for a haiku, which of course is not, far too much information. Put that together with simile, adjectives, verbs, oh dear no. Not haiku. So I had a go at trying to condense it, to illustrate how a hygiene might simplify it into a haiku. I came up with this, but it would be interesting to hear, or read, if any of you could do something with it. Anyway, here's my thoughts. 
the midwife, slapping the soles of your feet. Suddenly we cry. OK, still too many verbs for my liking, as you know, but you can see the difference between the one poem and the haiku. The haiku is very, very simple in, in its use of language and describes an everyday, albeit miraculous, occurrence. And I hope the last line gave it a bit of an aha moment. Why does the person present in the verse also cry? So can I offer you some more examples of simplicity in everyday life? This one by Fei Ayoyagi may not be something everyone has experienced. I know I have, and increasingly many people do. Citizenship interview. The officer's accent thicker than mine. I hope you can get the haiku moment in this, even if you've not had the citizenship interview. Was it that the officer was also someone who wasn't first language English? Or was it, as in my case, that my interviewer's accent was very heavily accented in the Swiss dialect? So that I had real, I had real trouble understanding him. Anyway, I passed. Underground parking. No space for the moon. That one by Terry Ann Carter. And surely we've all spent time in the underground car park. And the verse says something really quite obvious, but it hadn't occurred to me before. I love it when that happens, don't you? Sunlight on the bedroom wall. A new window. Anna Maris. Here I am with the poet, lying on the bed as the sun streams into the room, and I can see that second window. A carefree summer day in warm climates. Oh, how I wish for those days as I look out the window today and see the snow falling and the garden that yesterday I was checking for signs of tulips and daffodils disappear into the white. And lastly, Night Terror, I Sit Up With His Fear by Jonathan Roman. What I enjoyed about this one is the notion of the night terror. Who has it? What is it? Well, it's obvious, you might say, and yes, on first reading it's clear. It's his, but who is he, old or young? Why is he scared? And yet again, could it be that the observer and the observed are both scared? I admit to having had a panic attack when I first read this. It took me back to nights that I'd spent both at the bedside of a couple of my children who'd spent time in intensive care and by the bedside of my dying father. Thanks, Jonathan. So back to my point. In all these cases, the verses are simple, told in simple language, describing situations that we might have experienced, and yet, in their choice of these few words, the poets have created haiku or senryu. These verses also show us something that I want to talk about in episode 7. At first, as I said to you, I called it emotion. At the moment... I'm thinking um, collective consciousness, but I'll get my head round it in the next few weeks and we'll discuss it next time. And so with a deep breath, I move on. Really sad to leave these verses behind, but happy to have shared them with you. Let's start the next Renku. This time we're trying something different. The Rinku is a story about social themes. My thanks so far to Paddy White, Wendy C. Bialik, James Young and Robert Horobin. And you can check the website or the show notes to see who wrote each of the verses. So here we have it. Beggar, palms up, facing the sun. A passing dog smells the soles of his shoes. Immigrant streams in cement standing. Rain clouds gathering, no bed at the hostel. Stone epitaphs, my tomb is bigger than yours. All are dead. Gargoyles grin as they piss on the fallen. Seeing his breath, only the living can feel the cold. A ray of light, rage thaws the frost. 
And there we have it. And so it's goodbye, at least for this week. Next time, I'll be bringing you a selection of haiku and senryu about recipes. It's been a real pleasure to read through all the submissions. And perhaps this is a good time to remind you that the next deadline is the 1st of April, and the topic is afternoon break. Email me your verses. Show me your thoughts and activities during your afternoon break. Until then, keep writing. Please check out the show notes for extra bits and bobs. And if there's something that is missing, just email me and I'll sort it out. Ciao.